Okay, here's, here's a good one then. Ken, you know this one. Um, who is the strongest person in the Bible? I'll give you a hint. It wasn't Samson. No. The strongest person in the Bible was Jonah. Even a whale couldn't keep him down. Uh, oh, it's pretty bad. Um, and then one Sunday school class, the teacher was talking about uh, Lot and Lot's wife and how when they left, God told them not to, not to even look back. And the teacher said, and Lot's wife turned back, or looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. <laughs> and one little kid said, oh, that's nothing. My mother was driving and she looked back and she turned into a telephone pole. Well, with that kind of um, little exercise and, and different kinds of thinking uh, will be helpful when we come to our lessons this morning, which talk about being faithful, especially in the midst of conflict. So please join me, if you will, in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who's teaching his life whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, our teacher and guide, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and self-ambition that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
The first reading for today is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 11, beginning at the 18th verse. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew that you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Word of God, word of life. <clears throat> we'll read responsively Psalm 54. Save me, O God, by your name. In your might, defend my cause. For strangers have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life, those who have no regard for God. <clears throat> Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble, and my eye looks down on my enemies. The second reading is from the book of James, chapter 3 and into chapter 4. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypo hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went on and passed through Galilee. He did not anyone want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying, and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. What does it mean to be faithful? What does it mean to follow? To follow Jesus, to see Jesus. Those are questions that we ask ourselves as, as disciples, 
as followers of Christ as we struggle with what it means for us to be faithful each and every day. And our lessons this morning help us to reflect on those very questions, but they do so in the midst of conflict and disputes. The most dramatic of the conflicts is, of course, in our first lesson from the book of Jeremiah, where Jeremiah, innocent as he was, or so he claims, um, was not aware until God told him that there was a plot against him, that his the town in which he lived, his neighbors, his family, his friends, were seeking to destroy him. Seeking to destroy him to the point that his name would never be remembered again. Oh, that's pretty serious. They were seeking to destroy him. And how did, how did Jeremiah respond? Well, Jeremiah responded the way he, he responded to everything. He whined about it. Now, whining is, is my term. And if you read the book of Jeremiah, it sure sounds like he was whining about everything there is. The proper term for what Jeremiah is doing is lamenting. Um, and it sounds like whining, but lamenting. He's giving voice to the pain and the sorrow, as he did in this case. His, his approach to every conflict, to every dispute, was to lament about it, to voice the pain, the sorrow, all those feelings. And then to listen or to speak in his, his situation, to speak a word of hope from God. And the big dispute in Jeremiah's time was that he was proclaiming that God's judgment is upon his people and that they will suffer because of that. But the hope that he also proclaimed was that God would not abandon them even in the midst of their distress, even in the midst of, of everything going on, God still cared. For Jeremiah to deal with disputes and conflict was to give voice, to lament, and then speak a word of hope, the word of hope of God's grace and mercy for all. And our second lesson, James also talks about disputes <laughs> very plainly. And he raises a question. He asks a number of questions. He says, why is it that there are so many conflicts and disputes among you? And then he offers a possibility. He says, could it be that it's some craving within you, some desire within you, that there's something with inside of you that you want that you cannot have? And because you cannot have it, you create all kinds of disputes and conflicts among you and all your friends. Oh, but James' approach and his encouragement was for people to draw near to God. Draw near to God in a very specific way. To listen to the wisdom that comes from above, the wisdom that comes from God. He says, because in our earthly, in our earthly wisdom, our earthly wisdom is full of, of envy, Deceit, self-ambition, um, and this phrase that he uses, besides it's boastful, it's false to the truth. <laughs> he says that's earthly wisdom, and we can't rely on that, but rather rely on the wisdom from above that comes from God, the wisdom that is gentle, the wisdom that is pure, the wisdom that is willing to yield and filled with mercy, and bears good fruit. Whoa. So for James, when conflicts and divisions arose, it was a matter of drawing near to God. And he encouraged people to draw near to God because he said, God does draw near to you. Oh. And then in our gospel lesson, there's another dispute. But this is among uh, Jesus' disciples. Jesus had just told them for the second time what was going to happen to him, that he was going to um, be betrayed, he would be killed, and then after three days he would rise. And Mark tells us they didn't understand what he was talking about. And so nobody dared question anything, even ask questions, 
Maybe because fresh in their minds was still the rebuke that Peter got uh, just uh, shortly before this. And so they continued on their journey. And when they arrived at where they were going and they entered the house, Jesus turned to, his, to the disciples and said, Say, what were you guys arguing about on the way? And their eyes got big. And I'm sure they kind of looked at each other and they were silent. Nobody said a word. Not even Peter, which is unusual. Not even Peter spoke up. They were silent because on the way, they were arguing amongst themselves who was the greatest. Oh? Now, we are not really sure what brought this all about, but perhaps it had something to do with suddenly it's sinking in that Jesus is going to be killed and who's going to take his place and who's the greatest among them? I don't know. But they were arguing about who was the greatest. And they didn't dare say a word. They were silent. So Jesus calls the 12, sits them down, and says, anyone who wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all or slave of all. Oh, that certainly is diametrically opposed to what they were arguing about, about being the greatest in their time and probably still today. People looked at other people with, with some sense of power. Maybe it was wealth or just a strong voice or strong leadership, but people with power as being among the greatest. And they would look at people and, and people with, seem to be in control of things and, and have their stuff all together and, uh, and maybe even wealthy, uh, were considered among the greatest. But here Jesus is saying it's just the opposite. It's not about being powerful. It's not about being in control. It's about servanthood. It's about being a slave to all. It's about being last, not first. Oh, it's a whole different approach and a whole different way of thinking. And then to cement his, his idea, he brings a child into their midst and holds up the child. Now, a child in those days were not any, any person of value. Um, you know, I, growing up, I was told the children were to be seen and not heard. Well, in Jesus' day, they weren't necessarily even to be seen, um, uh, certainly not heard. Um, uh, they were nothing. They were vulnerable. When you mentioned a child, you mentioned someone who was needy, someone who was vulnerable. And Jesus said, anyone who welcomes one of these, one who is vulnerable, one who is in need, welcomes me. And then, and here's the punchline of it, not only welcomes me, but welcomes the one who sent me. Jesus was always pointing us and his disciples back then to God the Father, because that's why he came, to proclaim God's love and mercy for all people. Our lessons deal with conflict. And I'm sure that none of us have had any conflict or, or any disputes among us, especially this past year. And we all get along just fine as a community and uh, politically, etc. <laughs> yeah, fantasy, right? Well, we've all had, we know the disputes. Vaccinations, masks, um, physical distancing. Um, how do we respond? Um, what is it all about? There are a lot of disputes among us. It's caused great polarity and division. And how do we deal with that and be faithful to our Lord and faithful to our calling? Do we, in the midst of conflict and disputes, do we, like Jeremiah, give voice to the pain and the sorrow that people are feeling? And do we listen or speak that word of hope that comes from God who still cares in the midst of it all? Or like James, in the midst of conflicts and disputes, do we rely on our earthly wisdom? Or do we draw near to God in the wisdom that comes from above, the wisdom that is pure and gentle and willing to yield? And in the midst of conflicts, 
in the midst of disputes? Do we seek to be the first or to be the last, as Jesus said? Do we seek to be the servant or the slave of all people, to welcome all people? Wow. It's a lot for us to struggle with. But the good news this morning is, as we struggle with all of that and struggle with being faithful in the midst of our lives, in the midst of conflicts and disputes, the good news is that God is faithful. That in the midst of it all, there at the foot of the cross, God is faithful and we are united in his love and the mercy that comes from God the Father. God continues to be faithful even as we struggle. And this morning, our Lord comes to us in simple bread and simple wine, or as we know, those impossible little packets of bread and, <laughs> and wine. But he comes to us in a very real way with his very presence to remind us that we are forgiven, to remind us that we are free, to remind us that we are enabled. We are enabled to love and to welcome all people. Not only to welcome all people here in this place, but to be a welcome to all people wherever we might find ourselves. Welcoming them in the name of God's love and mercy. May God continue to grant us his grace that we indeed might be the very presence of his love and mercy wherever we are. With boldness, we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please rise. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. The third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of community, we pray for the church around the world. Unite us in our love for you. Help us overcome our divisions, that we are encouraged to work together 
for your sake. Lord, in your mercy. God of creation, we pray for this hurting earth. Awaken in us a new desire to care for this world and empower us to support agencies, organizations, and individual efforts to heal our environment. Lord, in your mercy. God of cooperation, we pray for nations of the world embroiled in conflict. Inspire leaders to listen to each other and work towards peaceful solutions to disagreements. Protect the vulnerable, especially children who cannot find safety in their home or country. Lord, in your mercy. God of comfort, we pray for all who live with mental or physical illness. Help them find appropriate care. Bring healing and wholeness when the path forward seems bleak. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, we pray for the young people of this congregation. Renew in us your call to welcome the children in our midst. As they grow, strengthen their faith and our commitment to them. Lord, in your mercy. God of consolation, we give you thanks for our loved ones who have died and pray for all who grieve today, especially the families of Norma Pierce and Carl Gebhardt. Shine your grace on all your saints. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please turn to those around and, and share a sign of peace. That's peace. As has become our custom during this, this time, we will uh, share the, the body and blood of Christ together following our Lord's Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our calling and our joy, that we should at all times and all places Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body and it's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. And it's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. If you'll take the wafer. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ, and it's given for you.
with the wine. Take and drink. This is the blood of Christ, and it's shed for you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood remain with us as we seek to take the message of love and grace into the world. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of life, in the gift, the gift of, of your life. body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love, in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Before the benediction, um, one announcement that um, Diane forgot to make this morning. Um, she didn't forget at all. <laughs> um, the, the purple hymnals that uh, you received coming in, if you can stick them in the pew someplace or just leave them there because we will be using them uh, in the weeks to come. Um, so if you can find a way to... to um, <clears throat> Gently cram them in there. That'd be fine. I receive the benediction. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing life into a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God.